<laughs> Hi. Hello. Is it working? Yay! <laughs> so exciting. Hi, Anna. Sorry. I'm being a bit giddy now. <laughs> oh, I left my glasses. Sorry. I haven't recorded one of these for a while. I kind of thought, <laughs> oh, no, I've forgotten how to do it. That's all right. I've forgotten how to do anything remotely technological, so you're well ahead of me. <laughs> <laughs> I think it all just changed about two weeks ago. The whole technological landscape yeah. just changed. Yeah. Now we Zoom. It's it's pretty... Um, I had to do a online interview this morning with a publisher in America and it was on a completely different software thing. And I actually... My agent went, maybe you should put lipstick on. And it was like seven o'clock in the morning. So I got up early, popped a bit of lippy on and made it look like I was actually dressed and I had my jammies on. <laughs> That's so bad. hilarious. Anyway. <laughs> I've put nothing on for this whole uh, series apart from Vaseline. <laughs> and, and a little bit of something under the very dark eyes. I've the got the earrings sun on. Cream. Yeah. I'm sitting on the floor in my son's bedroom because it's like, I don't know, like, there's nowhere to sit. In, you know when you're suddenly all at home and you're like, there's nowhere to be quiet in this house. It's so weird. The, and yeah. yeah, I have nowhere with light in this, no, in this no. part of the house. That's why I used to record next door. Which, what was I thinking? <laughs> Are you still at school? Like, is Queenslanders, is Queenslanders are still at school? They are officially still in school, but we okay. are now given an option. Okay. So, Friday we got sent home threats that if you don't send your children in, they're never going to graduate. What? And then Monday or Tuesday, just gently pat yeah. him with my foot. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, Tuesday, Monday or Tuesday, we got emails saying, oh, okay, keep them home if you like. Oh. But you don't have to. But so the they don't know what they're doing. The teachers want you to, don't they? Well, we get, I've had, because I've got three kids in three schools, so I get, yep. how many fingers did I hold up? Yeah. <laughs> You've got eight children. <laughs> this is why I write. <laughs> My sister's the maths specialist. Um, <laughs> so all of them sent emails and they were all the same email from the department pasted in with a bit highlighted in green or yellow saying oh, something they that. wanted to say. The main thing was do not email your teacher. Yes. That was my yeah. least favourite school. Yeah. Yeah. And to the other ones who said, we've got this, we're all set up, don't worry. Uh, and then my, my youngest, her teacher just sort of said, oh, it'll, you don't need to take any books home. Uh, when I went in and she said, they'll, they'll probably be back in a couple of weeks. It'll all blow over. Oh, really? So I just thought she's completely unprepared. Well, no, my brother is just kindly dropping off milk and things that we need. Yeah, I am getting some stuff home delivered, like meat yeah. and veggies and stuff. Yeah. It's pretty good around here. There's a lot of places that will home deliver. So it just limits the amount you have to go out. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen everything. What gets up onto YouTube is a minor amount Lit. compared to the life <laughs> that I've seen in people's houses. That's brilliant. I bet. It's crazy. So, But I have to talk to you as a writer as well as um the amazing human that you are because then i have an excuse to put your book up and make it look really pretty here okay. in the middle yeah. um you have an amazing writing career like it's mind-blowing you're writing with emily gale and it's yes. very exciting how is that going given the apocalypse what is happening well luckily we'd already finished a draft late last year which uh so text have taken text of publishing that which will be very exciting so yes. jane pearson is currently doing our edit so we should get that soon i think this is the kind of i mean as much as it's hard for all of us because we're losing all our paid you know other work like school visits and festivals at least we can still do the heart of our work can't we as yeah. you know, lockdown home people if you can do yeah. all of that with children running around and trying to homeschool at the same time yeah. um Yep. So we're just waiting for an edit and then it's going to be really exciting because we get to dive back in. And I, you know when you come away from a project and you haven't been in it for ages and then you just get that yeah. beautiful... And I'm really looking forward to Jane's edit. I think it'll be really... Yeah, um, she edits with pencil, so... Oh, it'll wow. special, I think. Yeah, I know. Not red pen, no. No, not, not red, red pen. pen. No. 
<laughs> and when you're away from your project, do you start to imagine it's way worse than you thought or way better than you thought? No, always way better. I'm always hyper optimistic. I always have this theory because I often send really bad first drafts to my publishers or, you know, editors okay. or agents. And I have this theory that as soon as I press send, somehow something fixes in that process <laughs> and all the bad bits just get repaired by someone other than me. And what they get is 20 times better than the crap that I know it actually is. So oh, I, I'm right. very optimistic oh, about that. And I then like so when it. It, <laughs> But when it comes back with all these structural notes, I'm always really surprised because it's like, oh, I really thought it was... <laughs> I really thought it was just going to repair itself. So, um, yeah. <laughs> yep. I love that. That's a great attitude. I'm going to, I always kind of hope that there's this little chance that what I couldn't see might perhaps have an element of just, you know, genius in there. Yeah. Maybe what looks like chaos to me is someone else's. Yeah. Brilliant. Exactly. But then it often just comes back as, yeah, that was chaos. So, yeah. <laughs> I know that does happen much more often than I'd like it to, but um, oh. yeah, that's okay. At least you feel positive. I think you just have to feel positive when you press send the first time, don't you think? When you send that's it off the, the hardest one time. for me. I'm not because Is I'm that... used to having to make it, and I have not done this a lot apart from with academic work, where yeah. it was basically with my academic work, I was incredibly probably lazy for a really long time sending off things that I knew needed fixing thinking yeah. but I was trying to fix the bit that really needed it I didn't worry about the rest yeah I just really was looking at that bit so don't just don't don't worry about I don't know structure I was trying to get the concept right and they're kind of like could you just send us it with it all like done and so then when I did Peter Liar I made it like some of the review comments were things like there's no spelling mistakes this is weird but it was because I was absolutely convinced it had to be copy perfect, perfect. wow um, and so now i've just finally for the first time sent off a few chapters to danielle to look at um and they're not completely finished and they're not perfect but i'm at the point now where i'm thinking tell me if i'm wrong please please I'm asking for advice i'm thinking do i want to really complete this project if it's just shit like do i want to waste my time i got my ideas out it's mostly there but it's not perfect. Am I wasting my time polishing this up if it's actually just a crap idea? <laughs> so I sent them a few chapters to say, is this the sort of thing that you want? And I've sent two options and said, what oh, do you yeah. think should come next? Because oh, yeah, I don't care which one. Yep. But I don't know. I, it's really bad. I never, um, when do I don't very often show anyone until I've done a whole draft, I think. Oh yeah. There's a draft, but it's not like perfect, perfect. Oh, I think it's, per I think it's fine to work on something that's right. not perfect, perfect. And I think first yeah. drafts ever are like, they're always kind of, or mine are always really messy, Yeah. but the, but the heart of them is always there. It's that. I but then the what you end up with. Feedback. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The voice is there and the tone is there, but then what you end up with down the track to be published from that first compared to that first draft is so markedly different. I think that's okay. I think I would much rather know early on. Yeah. Then. Yeah. Cause I think I could wait. spend months, you know, doing this thing. That's the wrong thing. Anyway, yeah. that's me just like squidging advice out of you. That's terrible. <laughs> I'm also thinking, no, gosh, you could give really... us all parenting advice right no, now. And I'm like, oh, that's no, not no, fair. You don't, want, you don't want that. But, um, I, I think that's good though, if you can get that kind of advice, like I would always write with my first draft, send them to Emily and then get her to give me a really, cause she's really, she's really insightful, but she's also really honest. And so yep. she will say what isn't working and what is working. And I think if you can do that with anyone that you yeah. trust, that's just invaluable early on. Yeah. yeah. All of that. But then now maybe people have more time. <laughs> I have less time, but other people seem to have more time. Yeah. Um, I don't feel like I'm actually achieving very much at all in a whole day at the moment. Like I, I'm not even showering, very rarely getting out of my pajamas. <laughs> as long as I'm dressed like... from here up. I'm exactly. Fine. That's the new, I love that. I love that you only have to just worry about like waste. I'm not even really there. Just like here. <laughs> Perfect. It's sort of like the one optional thing that's going to happen uh, in this whole experience is bras. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the right thing. Not having to do my school pickups and drop hops. It's great. I know, I know. And my daughter cut my hair for me the other night, and as long as I Very kind of do good. that, <laughs> slightly tilted, it's almost straight. It's perfect. I don't know what to do about the haircuts, and I know you're on full yeah. isolation mode. 
So that's great. But I, we're in the middle here. It's like there's still. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then the advice being that, yes, you can go, but you have to do social it's distancing. 30 minutes. Isn't it a 30 How minute haircut? <laughs> but it also has to be from a meter and a half away. Like how long are her arms? <laughs> Would you trust your children? No. I cut all their hair anyway. So this is a funny thing. Okay. I actually bought, this is so, I don't know why I'm telling you this now, but I actually bought because I liked the, the furniture that came with it, a home hairdressing salon one day. <laughs> I'm like, marketplace. So I really liked the furniture and I loved the idea of the chair. She had some scissors, but she also <laughs> sent me all the hair dyes. No one in our, in our house dyes their hair. All the professional hair dyes. I've got the big capes, the chair no that way. spins and turns, all the scissors. And I, so I cut three kids' hair anyway. I haven't done my husband's yeah. for ages, but he goes off and he pays, which I think is good because his head's really big compared to the kids. <laughs> Feels really big. Anyway, and plus then I'll start on his eyebrows or his nose and he gets a bit like, to edit this out, Anna, totally inappropriate. So anyway, I have like equipment <laughs> to die for i have color charts with little hair swatches i've oh, got all the scissors I think you've got to sell all of that just pop it all up on um you know yeah. my daughter's well, now she wants it to... might be worth gold eh? yeah well all the teenagers i know are dyeing their hair because they're so bored like my daughter's like working out what color she's going to do how she's going to dye it because she's like so i've got to do something i'm going mad yeah because they're just These, stuck at home like the color charts are amazing i had no idea oh, like it how they grade our hair and the color like numbers well, anyway it's very interesting but you yeah. set a fork in a hairdressing salon <laughs> but no one <laughs> else in the house can do it and of course because my hair is really short and yeah. i can cut all the front myself i have done this because i'm known to get desperate for a haircut and just do it myself and then my hairdresser's is like no. so she fixes it all up but i go every three weeks that's how much i hate my hair getting that oh, much too long no. so I, I may have to and i can't do the back so i may have to shave the sides shave and it? go full mobile yeah. tilda swinton <gasps> yeah. make it go like you can pull that white up. tilda yeah yeah i think just dye it i think just go all out and just start <clears throat> doing some in, in really intense experimentation <laughs> red hair doesn't dye well ever the only color no, i've ever no. managed to get to stay is purple so my teenage years were spent being called the robina berry <laughs> It's a little crew cut. Sorry, this is so irrelevant. I have to get like content out of you to edit into this. What am I going to say? So you drive loads up and down the coast and have done your whole life by the sounds of it. And when I wrote Peter Lyre, she does a bus trip to the snow from Brisbane down to yep. Perisher. And during yep. the fires where we met, not like in a fire, but you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Felt like it. Um, it, it occurred to me that that whole landscape has changed. And that what yes. I wrote as green pastures with then snow is now different. And have you seen those changes down there? Because I haven't been down south since the fires. I haven't. No, I haven't actually seen. What have I seen? I'm just trying to think. I've seen photographs, but I haven't been to any of the places. So I can't imagine how changed they're going to be. They're going to be so changed, aren't they? It's not it's all grown really back or anything. And yeah, it's really I think still there's pockets showing. of. Yeah, I think there's like sort of growth. But Maybe I think it's going yeah. to be very sad for a long time. I, and yeah. can't, I mean, I just feel so sad for all the people who are in fire areas at the moment because you just think most of them still don't have ha any housing. And, and now no jobs. That's No, no job. jobs, no yeah, housing. Because, where, what, yeah. where are they living? What are we looking at the climate that they're kind of dealing with in at the moment? Yeah, it just feels so bleak, yeah. doesn't it? It's not good. And no. then now I was thinking that like, my daughter's ski trip's cancelled. Um, she was going to New Zealand, but I don't think they'd be, they're not going to the ski slopes here either. So no, all of those no. important road yeah. trips that yeah. they do mean a lot to the family. Like, where are we going to go now? Drive out to an empty dam or something? I suppose we're allowed to do that. Maybe. I don't know. We went to a deserted beach on the weekend for a walk on the beach. And that was like, there's, it doesn't seem to be anybody going to, it's really odd, isn't it? You sort of think if you, oh, if you have from Bondi. Oh, no, I think outside Victoria they are, but down here, yeah. because the weather hasn't been great, even we went for a roller skate the other day down, you know, kind of on the beach, like the beach area, and there was no one there. Like, it was really empty. Oh. So that's, it's really odd. Oh. Like, I would have thought that was 
we imagine that as a very sanitary place because of the breeze up here it's quite intense on the coastline you know it's um yeah yeah queensland coast so it's quite a sort of and there's so much so much space so many beaches that is my yeah. one thing that i'm thinking we'll yeah. manage but then what do you yeah. do when they have to go to the toilet um given that they're yeah. not bush kids in that way like we grew up we not really worrying so much about that but they yeah the kids are very sanitary that. yeah we did have that problem on the weekend okay quick get in the car we're gonna drive home <laughs> hold on tight hold on for an hour kids no we're not stopping for food <laughs> See, it's the stopping bit it's like oh no and the one thing i like about outings is that i may not have to feed them because we're somewhere else I and know. then oh, i'm gonna have to take all the food and yeah take everything it it's changing yeah it changes everything doesn't it it's really yeah. interesting yeah my other trip to not quite the beach but nearly was going to be to the gold coast for adaptable because I got oh, in and I now have to pitch yeah. online to producers uh, and screenwriters. Oh. And I know someone who's got a little experience with that kind of thing. <laughs> um, so have you looked at having any of your own novels adapted for screenplay? Adapted? The, like, um, the later? The, no. Is it pay or? Well, everything has changed. So my YA book that runs backwards was actually based on the short film that I wrote, the first short film that I wrote and made years and years and years ago with Phil Victoria, like, I don't know how many years, a long time ago, when I started off as a screenwriter. And I wrote that, made that film, and then Christina from UQP heard me talking about it and she went, I want that as a book. So that's how everything has changed became. And I would love to go back now and then adapt that as a feature. So kind of have this beautiful journey from short to book to feature. Yeah. I think it'd be a great feature, but um, no, the only one we, there has been a bit of talk between a friend of mine who's still very active as a screenwriter and I about adapting Secrets We Keep as a, some sort of telly series about Clem, but we haven't got very far because something always comes up and it's so slow doing all of that sort of stuff, isn't it? It's like, yeah. so many things come um, up. Yeah. So many things come up and I don't, I'm not great at time management. <laughs> So tell me about it. Yeah. This is, oh, I'm good at like volunteering myself into things and not realising how long they take or how much of your day. Yeah. Like editing film. I haven't edited footage since, not properly since I was in uni. And now I'm realising, and I love it because you can escape into it and spend hours on it. But now I'm spending hours on it every day. Yeah. So wondering that's... where their mum went because. Yeah. You know, Whoopsie. It's so, yeah. I enjoy yeah, it. Yeah, it's amorphous, isn't it? You can just kind of go down that hole for as long as you like, I think. I um but I will, I think what I loved about writing screenplays and what I do slightly miss, I think, writing books is just that beautiful use of dialogue to just tell everything in a scene. And I, I would yeah. love to be able to do that maybe with sick, but I don't know what, something I'd love to, I'd love to mess around with that. I think at some point, yeah. but I just and the way you can get on. that emotion through from just, yeah, there was one show I saw and it's called not like fr bloodlines and it's like, oh, yeah. it's an adult. Yeah. yeah the, and just the opening yeah. sequence of that yes. and the, the song. And it always just hits me that you can evoke that much about the scene in the place so easily. Yeah. Yeah. I'd love to be able to do that. Not that I could make that, but you know, I'd love someone to do that for me for, yeah, yeah. for mine. But I loved being part of the filmmaking, but my grades weren't good enough. You needed an OP of, three in Queensland to do film and TV at uni. Oh, really? So you wouldn't so, think about trying to write, trying to do the screenwriting yourself? No, I think they'd rather someone else do it. But also for me, I'm too close to it. I tried to convert a book once, a chapter book into a picture book. Yeah. And in a way, you've got to have that same ability to whittle down Dude, your work absolutely. essentials. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I'm too close. If I'd started it as a screenplay and my, one of my second, one of my second ones, cause I don't know which would be the second one definitely runs much more in that way that you, yeah. I can see how that would work so much more easily, but Peter liar, I don't know what they're going to do with it because it's so much her internal thought processes. And I think you need someone who's really expert at, at making that appear on a screen yeah. in the yeah. right way. So yeah. I think that's where I'll defer to someone's talent. Yes. Uh, who knows how to do it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's because all it, the short films that I've made were all based on short stories that I'd written first. Like it's funny how I never came at wow. things naturally sitting in a screen space. Like it always came 
as much as I love thinking about um, screenplays and dialogue and what something looks like, I don't think in visuals. I don't think, I think I think in words. I think that is yeah. the distinction for me. And whereas my partner's a playwright and he totally thinks in visuals and he can see, he can sort of be really economical in the way words are used. I'm not like that. I think I, yeah, I just think differently. Yeah. I love being in my pyjamas for everything. <laughs> There's so many benefits to that, isn't there? It's so good. That's, I like being comfortable. It's very important to me. Yeah. Um, surviving <sighs> with people at home in your house. Uh, yes, anyway. surviving <laughs> with that, everyone home at, at, uh, in your house. What do you think would be something people need to make sure to, that they look out for? So, like, we're only a week and a half in, so I think this could be very different if we are all still here in three months. Just giving each other a bit of space and having a routine, but then really being okay when that routine just goes sideways, don't you think? Like, yeah. I've tried to be, like, kind of have a routine and then you just go, like, three days in, you're like, <laughs> this is hilarious. <laughs> So here's your routine, but sorry, I've got to do recording now. You all have to go and do something. Exactly, exactly, exactly. And also just realising that whatever the rules are that apply to your kids, they kind of have to apply to you as well. Like, Damn it. you know what I mean? Like, You've got I to eat lunch at lunchtime. Yeah, I just kind of, I feel like I, I can't just be a constant, like kind of hypocritical in the way I'm sort of, you know, no, you can't spend five hours on uh, watching a movie. Oh, that means I can't, you know, like, <laughs> damn. So... <laughs> popcorn doesn't count as a lunch. Could you no. make me some extra oh, no, popcorn? I, I think it does, actually. <laughs> it does here. definitely count as a lunch. <laughs> it's a whole grain, right? And more than one lunch is okay every day because I we're really yeah. we're rolling with that at the moment. That's been fine. Yeah. I think exercising is really kind of important in whatever way you can do that. We've got stairs, so there's a lot of just trying to run up and down the stairs a lot. Um, yeah. yeah. We so don't have stairs. I, have I do have a treadmill. But it's currently yeah, piled with books. Yeah. <laughs> so I need to take the books off the treadmill and put the children and the and dogs on the treadmill. On the treadmill, yeah. Otherwise, my, my kids, so I absolutely detest kittens, like detest cats. I cannot stand them. I've grown up hating cats, right? Lived in houses with cats and never liked them. My children have totally blackmailed me into, they will be fine over this whole, whole process if I agree to let them get a kitten. And I'm like, no, what am I? <laughs> so that's Get an that, electric like, one. Like a digital, yeah. you know, like a robot. Oh, no, robot they've, got one. They've, they've got one that they know they want because a friend of theirs fosters kittens and they've, they just every morning they show me photos of how, how cute it is. Now it's gone oh. from one, one kitten to the kitten and its friend and its, and its sibling. Oh. And it's like, oh, I can see myself having a whole house of animals at the end of this whole process. Well, you can you know? always volunteer to help foster and then you get to give it back. Give them back. <laughs> <laughs> it's very important that you get to give your, the animals back that's what i did when they wanted extra guinea pigs because i said absolutely no extra guinea pigs uh, but we'll foster some so of course we got pregnant uh, ones and ended up with an explosion of baby oh guinea pigs no. but then they did go back in the end because one wasn't pregnant and was just fat it was the biggest guinea pig they've ever seen weighed off the charts so we were forever waiting oh, for molly to no. have babies they're all named after harry potter from my daughter so molly just was basically she never actually even Popped. She was just that large. Really. <laughs> she was bigger than any male guinea pig they've ever had. It was really bizarre. Wow. All right. Maybe maybe that's the yeah, maybe that's a good plan. Because I feel like yeah. I'm just gonna be blackmailed into buying the, you know, strange things online. Like I've already been, they've already like <laughs> just the weirdest things that I'm just suddenly, no, <laughs> I don't need that anyway. <laughs> Mine aren't at that stage just yet, but no. we have got like they've brought out all the noisiest toys. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, There's boy. a lot of drum practice. There's a lot of very noisy drum oh. practice in our house. So trying to make that work around what time that's allowed to be. <laughs> Mike's got an electric drum kit, and I swear, even when the um, power is turned off, I can hear it from miles away. Oh wow, really? Yeah, oh, no. yeah, yeah. We like the electric instruments. But I have a whole wall full of ukuleles. Hang on. <gasps> oh, fantastic. So, we keep... <laughs> so you're doing a family ukulele show? <laughs> I used to run the ukulele club at school. Did you? Oh, how I fantastic. can't play. Oh, that's great. I Only love a little that. bit. But I really like the instruments. So I was like, there you go, guys. Let's have that's ukuleles. Right. And then I get a bit addicted to buying them. And so that's why we have quite a lot. <laughs> One. Anyway, I've messed up my whole frame and everything. There we go. Uh, I'll say thank you. <laughs> but thank you so much for coming and chatting. 
and we will chat again soon because we're all going to be locked up forever. Ever. <laughs> That's right, Anna. I cannot cope with that idea at all. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay. Here we go. Bye. Thanks, Anna. Bye. See you. See you. <laughs> the number you have dialed has been changed.